Hello guys, welcome back to another video today with ARC Exotics. I hope all of you guys are safe and well and doing okay. Um, and in this video, we're going to be doing a setup and DIY build of a giant Asian mantis. We picked him up probably about 24 hours ago now. And obviously he come in a little 32 litre deli cup. Uh, not a 32 litre um, deli cup. And basically we want a little bit bigger for him. But we don't want to go for the stereotypical jars that are sold on um, reptile shops with the built-in leds into the into the lid basically we've taken our own little um, idea so we've got a quite a decent sized tub very similar to what he's in now but just a lot taller and a little bit wider and what we've done is cut out a hole in the top and basically put the mesh over that to act the exact same as what a little um, sweet jar would so we're going to be showing you the step by steps on how to do that and basically just showing you a cool video of the mantis. Um, I think I've got one of him eating and a few others of just uh, me handling him and exploring. And I've got a really, really cool time lapse that you've definitely got to watch um, of him eating. That was his first meal with us. I thought I'd set up a time lapse and watching it back is pretty incredible. For such a little insect, you can see so much going on in that. Uh, like I say, it's better if you watch it instead of me explaining it. But seeing his green body and the food go down his body unbelievable so you've definitely got to watch that and other than that that is about it so let's get into today's video right guys this is the little guy's malt and this is the little guy himself now he cost me 16 british pounds and he is a giant asian mantis i've just got him home and he's my very first mantis i've ever kept um so like i say you can see his malt in the bottom there he come in this little deli cup and he's got a little bit of mesh over the top. So what we're going to be doing is basically upgrading him straight away. Um, I could keep him in here for a little bit longer and monitor him. But I'm pretty confident that he is ready for an upgrade. So this is the, I don't know what it is, tub, jar, I don't know, it's plastic. So this is the thing we got. And as you can see, it's quite a bit bigger. And it's also a lot wider. I could actually fit the smaller cup inside this one. And it's got four clips as well to make sure that it's definitely secured and locked in. So what we're going to be doing is basically getting a mesh like this, which is actually the Exoterra drainage thing, um, bio drain, which is built and used for bioactive vivariums. And we're going to be putting it over the top like that and clipping it on. And that, once we've cut a hole in the lid, that will act as our mesh. So that should all be secured like that. And then you just trim around the edges to tidy it up a little bit. And then, like I say, hole round there. And basically, that'd be that. So, with this, the best way to cut it out, I've marked it out and I've got this handy vibrating tool. Yes, funny, I know. Um, and basically, as soon as you apply pressure, it does all the work for you. So, a little bit of pressure going down. I hope you like my shoes, by the way. Um, a little bit of pressure going down. And all it does is cut all the way around it. I've also cut some bamboo. And that is the finished product of the lid itself. I just need to sand them down. In here, I've put some basic garden topsoil. As you know, I use it a lot in my videos. Now here, all we've done is cut the bamboo in different sizes and stack them in the tub. This will give the mantis a lot of different climbing and much more different variety in height. So this is the first time of getting the mantis out of the tub. Um, and you're probably thinking that I'm being extremely gentle. But like I say, this is the first time I've actually held and handled a mantis. So I'm taking it very carefully. And as you can see, for me, in my opinion, he looks pretty cool. Um, I think, you know, that is something that definitely interests me a lot. And to be fair, it's relatively easy to keep. But we're going to be doing care videos on this guy a little bit later on in the future. But as you can see, he looks healthy, he looks happy. Everything's good for him. So it's just time to upgrade him. Now, like I say, this is the first time I've actually owned a mantis, so I'm just kind of watching him, seeing what he's up to, trying to sort of establish behaviour. Um, I've given him a little spray down as well. I know you should only spray him about two or three times a week. Uh, I have heard the wet tissue method works well as well, but again, you guys probably keep him. Um, so definitely let me know what you recommend and your sort of expertise in that and your opinion. So basically, I'm just going to see and try and sort of edge him into the tub for the time being. But as soon as I put him in, he was having a drink straight away. 
So as you can see, he's enjoying the water on the side there. Obviously, I don't know when he last had a drink because I've only just recently acquired him from the pet stall. So he was obviously enjoying that quite a lot. Now, in this little clip, you're going to see him strike. Um, and that was pretty cool as well. But the clip after this is pretty amazing. This is basically coming up as a time lapse of him eating. And so, so fascinating. And if you keep looking at his body, you can see dark brown and then light green. And it like, changes throughout his whole body. Um, and like I say, that is pretty remarkable. Because watching him from your own point of view, you don't notice it. But on a time lapse, you notice it loads. So keep watching that really light part of his body. And you'll see all of that change. But like I say, seeing a man as eat a cricket like this alive... I know it's gruesome, but it is pretty cool as well, so enjoy. So, as you can see here, all of the brown, well, what seems to be the cricket, going into his body. And you can see the colour changing on him as he's dissecting the cricket and picking the bits off it, like the legs, the head, the eyes, stuff like that. And as you can see there, runs down in a smooth motion. And then the more he eats, the more he'll sort of clear it once it's blocked. So it will get to that sort of point there. And then all of a sudden it would just swoop green. And I think that is one of the coolest things I've probably ever seen to do with inverts. So yeah. Followed by that we have cut the mesh on the Exoterra bio drain to make it a little bit tidier. Um, this later backfires because of other reasons but I'll show you why in a minute. But that looks pretty good don't it? That's pretty acceptable for a DIY build. All in all, aside from the Mantis, the actual tub cost me £2.50. Now, in this video, it looks even better because what I've done is used the mesh that they give me in the deli cup and I've actually glued it to the inside of the tub. I glued it and made sure the mantis was out of the way, away from the smell of it and the toxins, and glued it into place. Now, this, in my opinion, looks a lot better and is quite sturdy as well, and there's no way that he can escape. So I basically bought the Exoterra Bio Drain as a backup. I thought I'd try to use the mesh, but I wouldn't know if I could make anything from it. But I used the Exoterra Bio Drain, and it worked okay. It's you know it's pretty acceptable standard I think for a DIY build. But I ended up going with the main mesh stuck on the inside. Now to stick it on the inside, I actually used a brand called No More Nails, and it was the liquid form, not the sticker form, because there is two types. Um, so yeah. So guys, this is the finished product, um, and as you can see, I've stuck the label down there for the giant Asian mantis. Now, this little square here used to be to hold supplies for the rest of these guys. Um, but what I'm going to do is basically, what I've done to Frog's little box here, there's an LED stuck there. So I'm going to do the exact same on that side, but instead I'm going to have like a cool sort of red colour. And then this unit here is just going to be filled with little tubs like this and smaller ones of um, loads of different invert species like Manus and like Ghost Manus, loads of different types. So hopefully when we come back from this point of view like this, that little left hand corner there will look really cool. And um, obviously I know they don't really live for very long, approximately a year. And obviously I've not acquired this guy from birth, so he's probably got less than that. So obviously I'm going to be constantly changing and swapping what we have in here and it's going to be ever growing and in the future who knows we could even try and breed them. I know it is quite tricky but when I went into the store I did see other um, mammoth species in there so who knows. But other than that he's just chilling you probably can't see him very well just there and that is about it for that guy. So guys like I basically just told you that little square shelf in there is going to be mainly for inverts and mainly for mantis. Um, I'm also looking into a, well, it's basically a Viv Exotic snake rack, but what, was, what it is is it's been sort of converted into an invert rack. Um, I don't know the brand, but if you guys know the tub that I keep my isopods in, it's basically built to hold them. Uh, so I could get a lot of stuff in there like scorpions, millipedes, um, obviously I've now got the Madagascan hissing cockroaches as well. So yeah, maybe I'm looking into doing that and moving the tortoise table over a little bit, but we'll have to see. I think it will look pretty cool and like I say, they've not got a relatively long lifespan, so we are going to be having a lot of different stuff in there. And I've seen a lot online about breeding them. Obviously it's not something I'd jump into straight away after being a new keeper of Mantis. Um, but I did look in the shop and there was a lot of other species which looked really cool. But I know that some are a lot harder and um, 
to care for and their the requirements are a lot more specific so for example i saw the ghost mantis which was another good start on one but then i saw something like the orchid mantis which was almost double in price and it was also a lot harder to care for um so obviously i'm going to start myself with a giant asian because i've heard they're pretty hardy and they're pretty sort of you know a good start on one to go for so i'm going to go for that see how he goes might add a few hours because again there's no no extra cost to me do you know what i mean um he eats small crickets which are what the day geckos eat and i've got two of them and they never get through a whole tub so some of them will go to the mantis and obviously the more i get the more the mantises will have from them so again i don't really want to get any which are too small which, which require fruit flies because i don't really want to be keeping them um so anything that can take a small cricket will be suitable like i say i'm going to be looking into ghost mantises stuff like that but over time that little corner there should be pretty cool especially with the red light as well so other than that i think we've covered everything um the total cost with the mantis being 16 pound and all the setup cost me a total of 18 pound 50. so to break that down obviously the mantis was 16 the tub was 250 and that is it there um bamboo again i got bamboo shoots from the garden what we have um, in the plant pots cut them down got topsoil again that we have in the garden perfectly safe as well and i had some leftover sphagnum moss so i took some of that added that in that is it you know it's, it's as easy as that and if you've got wood in that that you don't always sort of you're not sure about taking from the garden you can always sort of um get the bark off it wash it and cook it or boil it and that will always work as well something for a madness won't matter too much so yeah it'll be be pretty good for you guys to try as well so other than that, if you've got any questions, um, let me know. But if there's any advice you can give me as well, I'm completely open to it because I know I'm a new keeper in these. There's probably some stuff I'm doing perhaps slightly wrong. Um, but I have done a lot of research. I have looked into them. So hopefully everything should be good. But I know from other reptiles like lizards and that that I keep that research online is somewhat different to what you'd need to do in person, if that makes sense. It's not always the best followed. So um yeah, thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for another video next week.